Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Carpo's channel. It's Friday, September 23rd, or I think it's 23rd, 2022. It's pretty crazy that uh, this year has gone by so fast. I uh, have a lot to talk about, but generally, uh, y'all know that because I ramble on forever. And I'll try to make this one as succinct and brief as possible, and uh, hopefully put out some coherent thoughts to the world as to where I'm coming from. And uh, just want to say I appreciate y'all for coming by to listen. I think this topic of truth is something that is so important, but is impossible to talk about. Not impossible. Nothing's impossible, right? Um, I don't know how I'm going to title this video. It was just something I've been thinking about this morning. Uh, the idea of, do we even want the truth? Now, if you'd asked me 10 years ago about this same topic, I would say, all I want is the truth. I want to know the truth about everything, you know. I want to know where the universe began, where it's going to end. Is there life after death? Uh, you know, do, am I reincarnated? Do I have any uh, purpose or special, you know, meaning that I am not aware of in life? Something that I'm supposed to be or supposed to be doing? And the more I analyzed these desires to know the truth on topics, the more it gave me an understanding of the different types of truth out there. I hear sirens. There's always sirens. I just can't wait to move away from that. Um, I, so I was thinking about this. <clears throat> I'll try to put it as, as, uh, as briefly as possible here that Truth, there are different types of truth. Truth that benefits you to know and truth that is just garbage. It's the same with, I've had discussions about, um, I've said this several times, I know. In my mind, I've said it a million times, but uh, something I learned in philosophy that I found very important is to understand that when you have concerns about things, there are things that are in your circle of influence and things that are in your circle of concern. If they're in your circle of concern, it means it's something you're aware of but you can't do anything about, such as, oh, I'm going to die one day, or, oh, politicians are greedy, or billionaires run the world. That doesn't really matter that you know those things because it's not going to benefit you or help you, or you're not going to be able to stop them. Whereas there are certain things that are in your circle of influence, like, um, I want to know, I want to be able to be a better parent or, uh, you know, learn a certain job, things that you can be aware of that can benefit you. So when it comes to truth, it's the same way. There are truths that, you know, was the moon landing faked? I, I don't know. Does it matter? Maybe, depending on what you research and what you do. Um, I mean, I've always been fascinated with, you know, all the conspiracy theories, so don't get me wrong. Uh, there are some credence to some of them, but it took me about a decade of learning all these different secrets and, you know, conspiracy theories, as they were called. Now that's become kind of a dirty word, but it's not. It's just the fact that, you know, it's a theory that a bunch of people conspired to do something. When I was younger, I heard about projects like MK Ultra as a conspiracy theory, right? Now there are documentaries on like mainstream networks about MKUltra. The government's come out and said, oh yeah, we tested on American people for decades. Um, many conspiracy theories have some, some credence and truth to them. And the reason that's important is because people love to be right. Okay, They just love it when something that they believe to be true, that everybody else called them a fool for, turns out to be correct. Now, sometimes this is because the person has wisdom about the topic, and sometimes it's because they just took a like, lucky guess. Uh, with what happened over the last two years with this pandemic, I won't even get into the topic of that because there's so much to talk about, but let's just say people were right and people were wrong. And that's the way it usually is. The truth is usually somewhere in the middle. It always has been. But the bigger question is, there are some truths, I guess, that we need to know, such as if I'm going to move to a new place, what is the truth about that location? You know, not what you see in a 
show about it, but what are the people really like? You know, what is the land like? You know, what are, what are the is the likelihood it's going to flood? Things like that. Um, there are certain things like diet or behavior. You know, what is the best for me? What's the best for my family? And you want to be able to act in a way that benefits you and those around you. So there are some truths that we can benefit from. God, I hate sirens. It's just so frustrating. It's so annoying to live near that because one of my truths is getting the hell out of the city. But uh, to get to the point here, which I've already rambled too long, we need our truth. We want our personal truth. That's the most important thing. If that involves believing in a religion or having a group that uh, uh, has their own, whatever it might be, as long as nobody else is harmed in the process, a person should be able to live their own truth. And so many folks are hung up on saying, no, you need to wake up, you need to see what's going on with this. Why? Why do you need to see what's going on with something all the way across the world? Because it affects you. Well, can I do anything about it? No. You can rant about it on the internet, and uh, these are the conclusions that I've come to personally. You know, nothing against anyone out there who's fighting for the you know, freedom, if they, if that's their thing, or fighting for the truth, but uh, it, it really comes down to the fact that people are stubborn as hell, and they're going to believe what they're going to believe. You can't convince someone overnight that something's not true, or something is true. Depending on their, how much they're wrapped up in that belief, it takes time, and all you can do is plant a seed, an idea, and if it grows, then it grows. If it doesn't, it doesn't, but something important there is that just because you plant a seed of truth in their head doesn't mean your truth is right. This is something really important. I, I know folks who have wanted to help others and educate others and you come to find out what they believe is complete nonsense, at least according to my truth, right? And maybe that's the big issue. I think we're looking to the truth for uh, some sort of a solace and understanding uh, because of our confusion about life. There's an old saying that comparison is the thief of joy, and uh, I love that one because we tend to compare ourselves to others, but compare our times to other times. And we build this idea of what the truth was about the past and where we're going to the future, and that creates a certain behavior. I think to let go of that has been one of the greatest things in my life, to not really care. I'll argue about what I believe until, you know, until the sun goes down, oh, until the sun comes up, I guess. Uh, and, and I love a good debate, and uh, I'm usually pushing for new truths because I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm totally willing to say I don't have all the facts on all topics. But the harder that you uh, seek to prove that you have the truth, you know, the harder it's going to be on you as an individual. The best you can do is present your case, and other people present their case, and you bounce ideas off each other. Something I've realized on that line is that, uh, and I think most of you are aware of this, is that the, the, the news, the news, is not truth. The news is a select group of sound bites and short videos to make you interested to keep watching. They're not there to present you with information. They are there to present you with hyperbole. And hyperbole, uh, unfortunately, people believe is how the world really is. If you, I think our lens of the internet has really tainted our view of people. And to go out there and actually talk to people, you find that most people are pretty cool. Even people you don't agree with on many points. They're not going to be in a bad mood and, and, and usually rant at you in person as much as a person might online, you know. And so we get this really nasty view of how people are, and I don't think that that's, uh, I don't think that's the truth. We're taught a lot of bullshit. We're taught that, you know, progress is the ultimate goal of humanity, and people buy right into it. Because what we have is a collective psychosis collective illusions, or what I would rather call collective delusions, that of what society wants and what society needs. And 
that is what's posed as the truth, that we're all capitalists, that everybody just wants to make more and more, and it's all about the shareholders and fuck the customers. You know, that's uh, kind of the mentality we have, and it's amazing to me that we live in this modern time <clears throat> knowing what we know and we still allow this shit to happen. And um, maybe that's why we're so distracted looking for the truth, we don't realize that it's right in front of us, that we're all being screwed all the time. It's, it's funny how 99% of the people, or 99% uh, of the wealth is held by 1% of the people. And that folks just say, well, that's just the way it is. <laughs> they worked harder than you did. And um, not just that people say that, but that others go, oh, okay, maybe I should try too. You know, and that's, we're living in, in a collective delusion that things are the way they should be. And so when we're seeking the truth, we're not looking for the right truths. We're not really getting down to the bottom of things. And who am I to say what, I, what that is? I think it's personal responsibility, personal accountability. First off, we have to let go of the idea that, you know, we're going to change the world. Uh, there are always going to be greedy people. You can change things about the world. But often these are misguided attempts to alter something for our own benefit or because we think something is unfair. Um, I'm not one of these full-on liberal tax-the-rich types. I've learned a lot about personal accountability, but also that I have no right to take from others. It's very complicated. Uh, there's a lot of philosophy, like John Locke. No, John, can't remember which one it was. I was listening to a couple of different philosophies earlier. Uh, modern philosophers, but competing ideas about personal responsibility in the world. You know, like, should you be, should we have a draft? Should you be forced to go to the military? Should we do what's best for the most people? Heck, I, I even used to believe utilitarianism was, a, you know, might be a, something to aspire to. I, it's a pretty foolish notion at this point, because I have totally different ideas and values than I used to about what it means to have your own personal space and choice, to be born into a free world, and to be able to seek your own truth and find what works for you. But there's so much to be said about the community and the group and the fact that we're all looking to find some sort of a community that we can relate to. No matter what happens, new problems always arise and we just have to acknowledge them and move on and if we deviate from the group we often get ridiculed and being a person who's not a member of any group or political party it's it does get kind of lonely when you realize no matter who you talk to somebody's going to disagree with you because or they're going to disagree with you on some point strongly because you don't take a liberal or conservative stance. Because if you're in the middle and you're a balanced viewing person where you look at things rationally and you look at it for what it is, not for what you want it to be, then you find that people don't understand. You know, if I say one thing that, uh, you know, opposed to, say, bailouts for college kids, I'm instantly labeled a conservative. Or if I have uh, one idea about helping those in need, I'm considered a liberal. People just can't handle it. It's like, I didn't realize people's brains can't grasp independence. The fact that a person thinks for themselves. And that may sound harsh, but I've just encountered so many idiots online, and in personal, in real life, of course, uh, that uh, it's hard not to bring that out and say, hey, let's look at this realistically. Now everyone has a voice. Sometimes that's not the best of us. And the loudest voices often have the least to say, but they will say anything to get attention. You see these people all over as these, I don't even know what they call themselves, commentators, I guess. People who just play a news clip and complain about how the left or the right or all the problems in the world. And meanwhile, that's so many people's truth, their reality. All they care about is what's going on with the left or the right. It's pathetic and it's a waste of time and energy. Like, I don't understand that. I don't understand how a person can get physically angry and upset about what other political parties are doing. <laughs> like, I, 
I've found that by abandoning the need for that approval from groups, uh, most people are happier. Most people find that they just completely are able to opt out of those pointless debates, but very feel very isolated at the same time. It's like a conform or die attitude a lot of people have, you know. So I think for me personally, being stoic and being calm when dealing with chaos has been of the utmost importance and a huge benefit to my well-being. I don't get angry and carry shit around with me. I don't... Um, it's funny, I, I've really let my emotions flow through me and been self-aware, try to observe myself from the outside. And sometimes I see myself get angry and then I'm right over it and I get sad for a minute. I might watch a movie or, or a, something, something sad in the morning and cry about it and then be right back to normal. I don't carry and hang on to these feelings, but I'm able to express them. It's, it's like a, I guess I'm acknowledging that I've, I've always worked towards feeling that way to be able to control my emotions. And I think I've done a pretty decent job at it. So when I encounter people who are totally out of control, who have anger problems or are sad or depressed all the time, it's hard not to, um, I don't know, you want to help people. You want to, you want to tell people things like think positive, but that doesn't work. It's not something you can do overnight. You don't take a course to learn how to be happier. You just stop trying to prove yourself to yourself and others. Stop comparing yourself and don't be depressed about where you are but be grateful for what you have even as hard as that might be sometimes the truth is only a way to feel in control about the world we live in and it's the same way when people seek a, a strong leader they really want to believe or 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 a whole group of people who are running the whole world and making all the decisions so be it but are they really or are they just feeding off of, you know, people's natural tendency to gather in flocks? Somebody's always going to make money off of that. But power is something that we choose to give away. <clears throat> we miss the real truth if we go along with the group. And I think if we listen to our intuition a lot more, uh, we'll be a lot happier. And that also includes acknowledging our mortality. And that's something a lot of people don't want to talk about. But if you don't, then you'll never be happy. You have to be able to acknowledge your short time here and be grateful for what you have. The truth really doesn't matter. We don't need to have pride in things that we have no control over or things that don't relate to us. If we want the truth, we should be seeking the truth in our own lives and trying to figure out what that means for ourselves. So that's my ramble for the day. Thanks for listening. Be well. You can check out some uh, extra content on Patreon if you want to be a patron. I also have a thanks button down below. And I will talk to you all next time. Be sure to check out the podcast, 15 Minute Free Thinking. I think the link might be in the description. If not, I'll put it there. And uh, I'm going to be uploading a couple of podcasts later as well. So, peace.